lunch. <laughs> Normally, the room would be half full. But the fact that you're here is no doubt a reflection of your interest, not only in the, uh, the talks that were given this morning and the discussions uh, that we had this morning, but also in the um, issues regarding Myanmar and the region. So I would be very happy to talk to you about that. But first, let me say, uh, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm very happy to be back in Singapore. I say to be back in Singapore because I used to live and work in this beautiful city, and it's always a pleasure to be back here. Uh, I would like to thank the government of Singapore and the people of Singapore for the kind invitation uh, to me and, and for the generous hospitality extended to me. Since 2012, uh, this forum has provided an unprecedented opportunity for senior government officials and business leaders, captains of industry from around the world to discuss global trends. This year, we are meeting at a very important time. It's a time when dark clouds of trade, war or tensions, whatever you, you would like to call it, between the world's two largest economies pose an ominous threat to global trade and investment. Today, I would like to offer a uniquely Myanmar perspective on the challenges and opportunities before us. I aim to provide you with an insight on how Myanmar is addressing many of the global trends now shaping realities both at home and abroad. We live in a world of change, and that is obvious to everybody who is here, but thriving amidst change is never easy, and it's perhaps harder now than ever before. The multilateral economic order that provided stability and predictability faces a decline in trust, as do the global institutions which underpinned it. The very concept of globalization as a process of international integration is being challenged. Multilateralism is being countered by a regression back to bilateralism. Liberalization is defined by protectionism. Rigid plans and strategies are quickly rendered irrelevant by powerful global headwinds. Threats in various forms are today harder to detect and thus harder to prepare for. As a result, our future is much less clear, clearly defined. Yet, this new operating environment also presents us with opportunities, the more so here in Asia. Asia has become an economic force to be reckoned with a growth engine of the global economy. It is projected that our region's GDP will double over the decade to come, driven by rising affluence and expanding urbanization. These same forces will enable the emergence of one billion new middle-class consumers, good news for you, and creating huge demand for goods and services. Indeed, the pendulum of the world economy is swinging back to Asia. Despite the inevitable uncertainties in patterns of global growth, we can be certain rising Asia will continue to be a pivotal economic force. In this respect, I believe we do face the future from a position of relative strength, and it is in this context that we meet today. As Asia is changing, Myanmar is likewise undergoing a period of significant change and transformation. Today, Myanmar ranks among ASEAN's fastest growing economies, with GDP rising from just 8.9 billion US dollars in 2000 to over 71 billion US dollars 2018. Our 53 million people are spread across a landmass twice the size of Malaysia or Vietnam. 
or nearly about the same size as Thailand, with an economy expanding between 6 and 7 percent over much of the past few years. According to the Asian Development Bank, Myanmar's economy is expected to grow by 6.6 percent this year and 6.8 percent in the coming year. This growth has been channeled in ways that have facilitated an unprecedented structural shift in Myanmar's economy, effectively halving the number of our people living below the poverty line. This newfound economic vibrancy is visible in both rural and urban areas. Myanmar is also, once again, integrated into the world's economy. It had been isolated for five decades or so. This includes interacting with and being impacted by the powerful forces, both visible and hidden, which shape it. The challenge for Myanmar, a newly democratic nation, is how best to take advantage of the spirit of growth and dynamic change. Dear friends, Myanmar today is a vastly different country compared to what it was just a decade ago. People did not really understand Myanmar because it was closed. Now we are open. It is pursuing broad-based and inclusive growth strategies, bolstered by a major investment promotion drive. Guiding these efforts is a new plan that is called the Myanmar Sustainable Development Plan, or better known as MSDP, a comprehensive, forward-looking, social, economic, and environmental reform agenda fully aligned with the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This National Development Plan has enabled us to embark on a new and exciting phase of our country's development while offering a unifying and coherent roadmap for all future reforms in line with regional and global commitments and in accordance with liberal economic principles. It is through this plan that we will strive to address global challenges that we all face in common, including those related to poverty, climate change, trade and investment. As part of this push for more investment, we continue to promote a more favorable, friendly and predictable investment environment, offering investors a fair and level playing field on which to compete. By doing so, we seek to attract quality investment. We would like to see you in Myanmar, to invest in Myanmar. We would like to see sustainable growth and spreading prosperity. We have recently opened our retail, wholesale sectors, as well as education, banking and insurance sectors to foreign investment. We are doing away with unnecessary regulations. We are doing away with red tape. Having launched a new and fully digitalized online business restoration portal known as Micro. This Micro is a process that one took 14 days. Registration took 14 days in Myanmar. Any company that came to Myanmar needed 14 days to register. Today, you can do it in one day. A process that once took weeks has now been reduced even to a single minute if you are fast enough on your computer. It's online. We have launched a new investment promotion plan and are nearing completion of a new land bank that will provide clarity and assurance regarding land ownership while simplifying investor access to land for industrial and commercial use. We have also put in place or updated the vast majority of the central laws and policies required to sustain what is being called a second wave of reform. Ladies and gentlemen, we have moved ahead with a new initiative that is referred to as a project bank, a rolling data bank 
consisting of major transformative projects that have been screened, appraised, and prioritized, such that they are ready for investment and implementation in the most transparent manner. At the same time, we recognize that major regulatory and institutional reforms are still required, and we are trying to make our best to ensure that uh, this will be fulfilled. That is why we have established a new public-private partnership center, mandated to facilitate and implement PPPs, develop concrete criteria upon which appropriate types of government support may be provided for these projects, and to assess the potential areas where the privatization of state economic enterprise may yield profitable results. As the implementation of our national development plan goes ahead, and new opportunities are being created for business to contribute to Myanmar's economic development through responsible investment. We also have a land bank that has been promoted. A project bank together with land bank, we are hopeful will bring the results we want. Myanmar, while blessed with abundant resources, including fertile land and fresh water, faces some challenges with regard to climate change. While some of these challenges we face today are rooted in geography, it is true that many of them are the result of misguided policies, but we are trying to rectify them. At the same time, with the world's population set to triple by 2050, a majority of whom will reside in Asia, challenges associated ensuring one of mankind's most basic needs, food security, cannot be overlooked. Myanmar was once referred to as the granary of Asia. We seek to reclaim this title. We want now to be not just the granary, but also the breadbasket, granary and breadbasket of Asia. So, dear friends, the third industrial revolution has made possible the, uh, the technologies that now enable our transition into the fourth iteration. As we make this transition, all countries will be subject to disruption, social, economic, political, environmental, digital, and technological. And therefore, Myanmar fully supports the free, free flow of ideas, talent, technology, and trade within Asia and between Asia and the rest of the world. And we believe that those who will prosper during this transition will be those that are able to swim with the tide, not the case. Myanmar is a member of the ASEAN group of countries, and ASEAN has also taken on a more proactive role in shifting the geopolitical economy, which has led to a change in the proponents of the markets and multilateral trading system. In this, ASEAN reinforces its centrality in the emerging economic architecture through the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP. And we expect the RCEP, made up of the 10 ASEAN countries plus six partners, China, Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and India, to complete uh, the negotiations by November, which is just around the corner. Upon successful completion of this, uh, RCEP, we will see the creation of the world's largest trade bloc, covering almost half of the world's population, almost a third of global trade, uh, global trade and output with a fifth of global FDI flows. So today I have outlined some of the major reforms Myanmar is now pursuing in order to prepare our nation for this next stage of transition. But there's still much to be done. When, in this regard, I can do no better than to quote State Councillor Dawasa Suji, who here in Singapore last year said, and I quote, our journey is not a simple journey. It is an adventure, an adventure into the unknown future. It is an adventure in which we are all taking part. We have many challenges to face, many weaknesses that we must address. But we have confidence, confidence in the ability of our people and in the capacity of our people to grow 
into these challenges. Before I, I conclude, let me leave you with three thoughts. First, we must increase our focus on research and development and remain open to investment with a particular focus on technology and skills transfer between countries. Once a desirable, Myanmar was once a desirable destination for our friends in Singapore to study medicine, to become doctors. But Myanmar today lags behind our peers in the adoption of key technologies and dissemination of knowledge, both necessary drivers which will enable Myanmar to take quantum leaps into the 21st century. When speaking of Singapore's own experience, moving from third world to first, it was His Excellency, the late Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, who noted that the decisive factors were the people, their natural abilities, education and training. Knowledge and the possession of technology were vital for the creation of wealth. And this is what the late Prime Minister said. We must all be guided by these words and we must fully support our nation's creative industries encouraging innovation and entrepreneurship in, in our countries. Reform initiatives must begin in the classroom and follow the individual into the workplace leading to a more vibrant, innovative and competitive private and public sector. I'd like to thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency.